right now and we are recording. Okay, so I'm also sharing my screen with you. Uh, so here's what we're gonna do today. This is not gonna be an hour long session. What I wanna do is I wanna make sure I can get you prepped for Meet the Firms, which is coming up uh, uh, later on this month. And so it's gonna be a little bit different this year. Normally I would have students come in and meet with me personally to go over just how to network with different firms, how the res resume should be, de uh, should be outlined. Uh, that's just not unfortunately gonna happen. Meet the Firms is gonna be virtual this year. You're still gonna have an opportunity to engage with the firms one-on-one -on -one, as well as in a group setting. And so you'll still get opportunities to network with them it's just gonna be, again, it's just gonna be a little bit different. So the things that I wanna focus on today, I'm gonna to show you a couple of examples of resumes. Uh, and these are, this is also the resume uh, specifics are not solely geared towards accounting either. So if you're a marketing major or finance major or just a general business major, you can also uh, utilize these, these templates. Um, uh, the other thing I really wanna go over is once you've gone to, to meet the firms, how to connect with these people. I wanna make sure your LinkedIn profiles also uh, are, are well established. And, um, and if you were in my class, you should have one, but your LinkedIn profiles are well established and you're able to connect with those individuals through LinkedIn, okay? And then the biggest thing is if anybody has any individual questions, just feel free to, to chime in and we'll, we'll go through that. This is really, meant for you to, to just resolve any questions or any issues you have prior to going in to meet the firms. As well, if you, uh, if you still have questions after this, we can set up an individual one-on-one -on -one group, one-on-one uh, -on -one session through Zoom. So I'm, I'm still here, I'm still doing coaching, so just know that, okay? So first thing I want to do is, I'm actually gonna, jump in and we're going to, I'm gonna pull up some resumes. Uh, I'm gonna stop my share here. And I'm gonna reshare so you can see these resumes. And these are just gonna give you just your general sense uh, as, to what, as to what the resume should look like. I'm assuming that by this point, many of you already have pretty well written resumes. Can everybody give me a thumbs up if you can see Jack Langborg's resume here? Perfect. So, so this is just one example. Uh, Jack is. Uh, oh my God, you look cute. Oh, thanks. What? Are you? Hello. Hi. <laughs> so this is Jack Langboard's uh, resume. He is a recent uh, finance grad. He's currently working at, um, I believe, at Lindsay and Brownell. Um, I believe in their tax department. So he graduated May of 2019. Yeah, so his work experience, as you can see, is it, there's nothing, I don't want you to think that you have to have extensive work experience or even, or even any accounting experience. What you want to do is list out potentially the jobs you have here on campus, um, previous work experience that you've had. Uh, it doesn't, they're not expecting you to have uh, extensive experience going into this, uh, into this meet the firms or into this, um, uh, into this semester. Unless, I mean, if you're a junior or senior, well, yeah, if you're going to meet the firms, they probably expect you to have a, um, an internship or two and have some general office or accounting experience. But for anybody, freshman, sophomore, just create your resume based on, you know, the jobs you've had in the past, whether it's, you know, a nanny or whether it's a camp counselor or whether it's a barista or working here on campus, any campus jobs you've had, okay? And so this is a basic layout. And Jack went a little, he did a little fancy, a uh, little watermark here or logo, but the basic components should be your education, your work experience, your affiliations and accomplishments, and then your extracurricular or volunteer experience is, um, is gonna be important, okay? And so I'm, I'm less concerned about the layout as I am concerned about the content. So even though here he's, you know, intramural basketball referee coordinator, so he's basically getting referees to come in and coordinate uh, for our intramural. He still created, you know, developed valuable managing and communication skills, sharpen attention to detail from refereeing games, okay? 
director of intramural software, strengthen personal and, uh, and customer communication skills, edify basic Microsoft Excel skills. So he's still using, uh, he's still using action words at the beginning of the sentence and they're just quick bullet points. There's not much you can say about a refereeing intramural sports, right? If you were inter, uh, refereeing like junior sports, you could say, mo you know, mo modeled good, you know, team attitude, modeled good sportsmanship, stuff like that. But for this, there's not just a ton you can say. So don't make something up. Okay. What they understand is all the recruiters understand first and foremost, you are a student and anything outside of that is key. Right. And that's what's important. So if you're a student athlete, make sure that, that, that you're a student athlete, make sure that that's on there, okay? So here he's got men's basketball team, okay? Student athlete advisory committee. So all that stuff is really important. The other thing that's really important to them is this section. Your GPA, your, if you're double majoring in accounting and finance, the year you're gonna graduate, those really are the most important things to a lot of these recruiters, okay? And then again, any extracurricular activities and they love people who volunteer. So make sure you have your volunteer experience on there as well. Any questions on, on this one in particular? I have one. Yeah. So for, for GPA, should we put cumulative GPA or like for the major system? Yeah, so, uh, so let's talk a little bit about that. So what typically happens um, what typically happens is if you've got a poor overall GPA, a lot of times students will break it out between, you know, my overall GPA is three point, because everybody knows if you want to go to a big four accounting firm, or even now BDO, Moss Adams, those second tier firms, I mean, three, five is kind of the minimum standard right now. Okay. And so a lot of times they'll, they'll, um, and they will overlook that often. But it's still, you know, their, their target is 3.5. So a lot of times students will say, okay, well, my cumulative GPA is 3.2, but my, uh, my in, you know, my in department or my major GPA is 3.6. Honestly, they, they don't really care about that too much. They want to see your overall GPA. I mean, it is what it is. If, if you were all going into medicine, I would say, you better have a three eight and you better score, you know, a 500 on your MCAT or whatever. <laughs> so a lot, there are certain, there are certain, uh, there are certain majors where GPA unfortunately does matter. And this is one of them. If you want to go to a big four firm, uh, I think kind of the minimum for, you know, for even some of the second tier firms, you know, the Levines, the Lindsey Brownells, the Duffy's, you know, three, two, three, two is about, yeah, is about as is, is minimum as most of them would go. Along Good question, same, though. Along the same lines, do you recommend putting SAT scores in? Nope. No okay. need. Yep. Yeah, no. Good question, though. Yeah, nothing prior to, uh, other than maybe some of your work experience, nothing prior in terms of education, nothing prior to Point Loma. You should just have your Point Loma education on there. Other questions? So this is a pretty simple, basic, you know, no jobs outside. I mean, he did like a, but even here, let's look at this. Even his camp counseling coached over 750 kids ages eight to 19. That's a lot different than saying coached kids eight to 19. You're, if you're responsible for 750 kids, that says a lot about who you are, what you can accomplish, your time management skills, your patience, your ability to perform, you know, world-class customer service. Okay. So even that, make sure if you can quantify something, I always say quantify it. Does that make sense? Okay. Let's get out of this one if I can and jump into this one. Um, so I'm going to share again. This is, this is a little more. So Leanne Huey, she's currently at KPMG. You'll all probably, some of these people you will actually meet. 
So if you don't already know, ja I mean, he just graduated, but Leanne graduated in 2017. She's currently uh, at KPMG in their advisory services department. Um, so she actually may be a part of the Meet the Firms as one of our alumni. And so Leanne's amazing. She's awesome. Here's the other thing. You can connect with these individuals, okay? So if you want to know more about KPMG, reach out to Leanne on uh, LinkedIn. Tell her, hey, Nick Wolf thought you'd be a good person for me to connect with. I'm really interested in, in KPMG and connect with them, okay? Connect with her. So hers is a little more, um, what I'd say, a little more formal of a resume, okay? So the way she has it outlined here, same thing, you know, high GPA. I like it when you put your relevant coursework in there. Um, uh, you know, it's one, it can be, if you don't have a ton of experience, it's a good filler, right? You don't want to be too sparse in your resume. You want it to be one full page. And so here, you know, relevant coursework, micro, macro, statistics, financial accounting. I think at this point she's, she was a sophomore when she did this. Um, so she didn't have any work experience. The next year she got her internship at KPMG and that's where she wound up. So here she's got education career overview you know she was uh she this was her leadership position so for some of you student athletes or some of you who are presidents of your current clubs you know she was the uh, treasurer for um, asu you know coordinated fundraising activities for the club you know record manage budget expenses uh and so what does that show as the treasurer shows that she's got financial management experience already. So that's great. Any of you treasurers of your department or your uh, treasurers of your club, I would put that in there. That's relevant, okay? At this point, many of you have already taken financial and managerial accounting, so make sure you have that in there as well. Um, so here she's got, again, assistant manager uh, with uh, a little restaurant, a little cafe, and here, right? manage team of five for festival catering company, support team members with food preparation, you know, great short bullet points, okay? Now, again, there's not much you can say about it, but say what you can. And again, she quantified this, right? I love it when you quantify. Um, here, you might also include if you're dealing with vendors, okay, within the clubs you work in, if you're doing campus activities, you're probably dealing with, even if Sodexo is your only vendor, Vendor management is a really great skill to outline. And then here, recreational worker, again, nothing major, but again, she makes it uh, relevant just by preparing and organize lesson plans, right? Efe uh, efficiently handle all staff member role. Uh, then the last one, child care worker. If you've done that, don't negate that, right? I, you know, my, as a hiring manager, I, I like that. It shows responsibility. It shows time management. It shows, you know, trust. And so for an accountant or somebody going into finance, those are three key uh, personality traits that everybody wants to see. Okay. And then, I, we're yeah, go ahead. I have a question. Um, how would you like, so I've worked with my family event production business. Yeah you make that like attractive on a resume not just saying this is my family's business that what's the name yeah it. what's the name what's the name of the company uh step san diego event Productions. so i would have no idea that's your family company okay <laughs> yeah it's not like you have to broadcast my dad or my mom got me this job no uh yeah just put sde right san diego event company sdec and then put what you did okay. and then if they ask if they say tell me about that company you could say well it's actually a family-owned business it's my family owned business. Uh, and so here's what we do. It doesn't negate if you're, you know, if you're, you know, uh, dad was Bill Gates and he got your job at Microsoft, would that negate the fact that you're working at Microsoft or the work that you're doing? No. So if you're still doing work, if you're doing accounting for your mom's, you know, uh, real estate development company, you're still doing accounting. It doesn't negate it, okay? doesn't minimize anything you've done. One of the things that I always, uh, that always just causes me great internal distress is when you all go, I just did this, or I just, there's no just. You're students, that's first and foremost. Anything you do above and beyond that is, is important and it's, uh, it's meaningful and important, okay? So 
Uh, yeah, so if you work for your parents' company, uh, then that's great. You don't have to list there, it's my parents' company, but you can list the company out, list what you did, and then if it comes up in the interview, tell me about this. Well, it's actually my, it's, it's our family owned business, but here it doesn't negate it. Here's what we did. I still set up, I still manage vendors. I still, you know, manage staff during setups. Uh, I still did day of event uh, managerial tasks, whatever, whatever you did. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Yep. Uh, here's the other thing that, so Leanne put on this, core competencies, and she kind of outlined them individually, analytical skills, problem solving skills, um, additional strengths. Okay, that's all good. I, you all know how to use Excel now at this point, because if you've taken my class, you've learned how to use Excel. If you've progressed on to uh, financial managerial accounting, so I want to see all your Excel skills in there. Right. I want to see all of you, whether you can, you know, still use pivot tables or be lookups, anything you've done. If you're certified in anything, even if it's certified in uh, Hootsuite or uh, or if you're certified in uh, Google Analytics, if you can use Adobe, like all those technical skills that still demonstrates that you have technical capacity and because you're going to have to learn a system when you go work for them. And so if you can learn one thing, if you can be, if you can utilize Google Analytics dashboards, if you can, um, if you can utilize uh, Adobe, because uh, it's not easy to utilize, then you can learn any other software. Any of you who can program, put all those hard skills in there. Along with any of your, you know, problem solving skills, self starter, those, um, those soft skills as well. Okay. And then here's her achievements and activities. Again, I, you know, she did the the DNT summer leadership program, you know, which is good. If any of you, I don't think we had the summer leadership program this year, and so you probably weren't able to do it. If, um, but if you've had it in the past, if you went and did one of the leadership summer programs, I would put that on there as well. And again, any volunteer work that you're doing, put that on there. Okay. Other questions? Okay, I'm gonna jump into one more resume and then we'll talk about how LinkedIn and then how to engage with these folks through the virtual space. Um, let's see here, I wanna share screen and yeah. So here's another, so connect with Jack, connect with Leanne and you're gonna connect with uh, Alexis. Alexis just graduated as well. I'm more, I'm more partial probably to this resume. Um, so I'll tell you why. So Alexis is now working for BDO Seedman. And so she just took the, she accepted an offer to work in audit services for BDO. And she just graduated um, uh, two years ago. And so here is what she is doing. Um, Actually, she graduated last year. This is wrong, but she graduated last year. So um, I like this because I'm a big skill. Like I want to know kind of your, your entry ticket is, you know, are these things. You have to be able to, to write and speak well. Uh, they want people with high-end customer service. They want people with attention to detail. They want people proficient in uh, Microsoft Office skills, general office skills. All these, I'm a big, I'm a big proponent of listing your skills first or education then skills. Okay. Cause a lot of times your skills are going to, they can just look at this and go, okay, you know, one, they, they meet the minimum standards for our GPA degree in accounting and finance. And then they've got Excel. This is the one I look for. And this is the one a lot of them look for. Do you have actually, uh, do you have Excel experience? And then we can jump down here because for most of you, for most of you, your, your actual work experience isn't going to be as relevant as your in-class experience. Does that make sense? Unless you've done something like she did an internship with a, um, with a, an accounting firm. And so, so worked with programs such as time map, concordance, Excel, assisted office administrators with general office, accounting, filing legal documents. I'm sorry, this was a legal firm, a law firm. But still, so she worked in a, 
She worked in a law firm, so she got some office work. So if you have that experience, that definitely needs to go on there. But it's still not as, really probably not as relevant as this and really some of this stuff. And the interview, like your interactions with them, that's what's gonna be most important. They're gonna see, okay, you've got a 3.5 GPA, you've got your degree in accounting and finance, you're a good student, you're a student athlete, and are my staff gonna wanna spend any time outside of work with you? Okay, we'll talk a little bit more about that, but that's really the key. Do you fit our company culture? Are they gonna wanna go out and hang out with you after hours um, because that's what we do? And so that's gonna be a big, a big uh, selling point for you. And that's so how that's how you interact either in an interview or during the meet the firms. One of the questions you're probably gonna to get too is what, so what did, what'd you do during COVID? Uh, I played Fortnite, I don't know. <laughs> I, I got to level 59 of, I don't know if there's levels on Fortnite, I'm just. Or yeah, I actually got Hootsuite certified. I got Google Analytics certified. I, I, I increased my Excel capabilities by learning how to use pivot tables, um, creating macros. I learned how to program. I went and volunteered at the food bank. I volunteered with my church. I guarantee you from now on, from now on, probably for the next 10 years, you're gonna get that question in an interview, okay? So just be un understand that you're gonna need to, to be able to articulate that response. And so here you go, Peel and You Beacon of Light, Homeless Ministry, uh, Business Scholarship, Student Accounting Society, Dean's List. And so I like this one. Um, yeah, Alexis, yeah, she's a great student. And so, and BDO swiped her up pretty handedly. Uh, I have a quick question. Yeah, for sure. How crucial would you say getting something like a Hootsuite certification would be? For accounting, uh, not at all. But if you have nothing better to do, it's pretty easy. Okay. Just like Google Analytics. For if you're going to do accounting, it just again shows that you're not just, uh, you know, lingering through this time. You're actually out doing things. You know, I, I'm big on, again, if you can go out and volunteer. I mean, now at this point, now you're back to being students. Mm -hmm. I mean, you may still ha you may still have some idle time to do stuff like that. But uh, a, Google, a Google Analytics certification w would be a, a probably relevant and would probably be, they'd probably appreciate that. But for the most part, Hootsuite or, um, or HubSpot, any certification like that specifically geared towards social media, probably not. But, yeah. I, I, but if you have the capacity to do it, do it. Okay. Other questions? Okay, so really any one of these three resumes would be fine. If you have concerns with your resumes, right? If you're, if you're just not sure if your resume is right, send it to me. I'm more than happy to look over it. I'm more than happy to set up a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with you. Even if you wanna prep for Meet the Firms, I'm more than happy to set up that coaching session. If for some reason, so now just so you know, I am the career coach for all 3,000 undergrad students, the MBA and the BBA uh, programs. So my calendar is a little booked, but for you all, because you took the time to come in here, if you email me for some reason, you can't get into Handshake and log in. If you want to still meet with me, just shoot me an email and I'll set up a time even in the evening if I have to, okay? Okay, next. Any questions on resumes? We're good. Thumbs up, okay. Next, uh, really quick, I uh, just want to jump into LinkedIn here. So I'm going to reshare again here. Uh, let me see here. Okay. Nope, I want to get rid of that. Open that up. Okay, so make sure again, that your LinkedIn profile is up to date, uh, that you've started connecting with people. I'm gonna jump into LinkedIn. I just wanna show you two profiles, okay? And obviously if you've taken my class, you should have a pretty 
a pretty robust LinkedIn profile at this point. Um, but let me just show you, you know, I'll jump into to this one. These just were the first ones that came out. Yeah, Austin, I just actually got off the phone. Austin Donovan's an alum. He graduated 20, I think 14. He is currently a senior associate at Moss Adams in Denver, Colorado. So here's his profile. Um, you know, uh, he's got how many connections? About 500 connections. He really does utilize his profile. So here's his Moss Adam ex uh, experience. Prior to that, while he was at Point Loma, he worked here as an accounting consultant, uh, did some volunteer work, he did some research work. Make sure that your profile is put together because when you start connecting with these individuals, that's what they're going to be looking at, right? And so again, if you have questions on that, just let me know and we can go through and I can help, I can help, uh, we can log into your profile and I can help you build it uh, and one, make it more effective. Here's his education uh, activities he listed in there with there, his licenses and certifications, uh, volunteer, a lot of volunteer experience, which is good. And then his skills, make sure again, I know again, most of you had my class you really built up your profiles. They're very nice. Um, but yeah, so make sure you have all your skills in there. And then if you're applying to uh, EY, don't have every other firm in there and not EY. <laughs> follow all firms, right? So go in and follow Deloitte, follow PW, even though PwC won't be there, follow them, follow KPMG, BDO, Moss Adams, all of the accounting firms, make sure that you are following them. Okay, so he's got Moss Adams in there. Um, he's got a bunch, he follows. Okay, because they're gonna wanna see that. Okay, so just, yeah, just make sure your LinkedIn is put together. Again, I've seen most years anyway. We are all pretty connected, so I think they're all good. Just if there's any little fine tuning that you need to do, make sure you get that done, okay? Questions on LinkedIn. And now is a good time, even prior to meet the firms, if you're, you know, again, if you're interested in a specific firm or any firm, I know I've shown most of you, most of you this, but I would do something to the effect of, okay, so if I do search, uh, I'm gonna go Point Loma, Nazarene University, it's already in there for me, but I'm gonna go into our alumni page prior to meet the firms. And I wanna go into alumni right here. I know, I, I believe I've shown this to everybody. And then I'm gonna go into, okay, I wanna see all the people that work at Deloitte because that's one of the firms I'm interested in. And so 62 people, right? So we've got Courtney, we've got Sarah, we've got Austin, uh, Renee, Connor, most of them are in tax, we've got some in audit. So I would start, I would start reaching out to some of these people, Tyler, Weir, great, this is a great guy right here. He would be more than happy to connect with you. Sarah Moynier, who's the recruiter there, she's an alum. She's the one that's going to be recruiting you. Reach out to them, okay? Even if they're not gonna be at Meet the Firms. Again, if I'm, if, I'm, if I'm like, you know what, no, I really wanna work for Price Waterhouse. Okay, well, Price, PwC doesn't come to our, doesn't come to our Meet the Firms, but let me see if they go by PwC or how many are there? 25 alumni at PwC. So there's a manager, there's a associate, there's a manager. If you wanna work at PwC, you need to reach out to one of those individuals. If you wanna do one of their internships because they don't recruit for, uh, from our, front, uh, from our um, school, they just don't, okay? A um, Couple more here, you know, if you go to, You know, Ernst and Young, 21 alumni, or not, that's wrong. Let's go EY. Thirty-six. 
So Ali Mearsman, this is the person you absolutely need to connect with um, if you want to go to work for EY. She is a, an alum. She's a CPA. She's also, though, the college recruiter. Um, let me show you some other people. Um, Will McFarlane, who is our former president of AS, SAS, Elijah Johnson. Um, I want to say Ben. Oh, uh, he's it. No, Kevin, no longer there. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, Ben's no longer. But if you want to reach out to, like, here's a McDermott and Africarian. I don't know if they're here in San Diego, but Ben Watson is a former EY alum and a Point Loma alum, and now he's a partner at McDermott. He didn't graduate that long ago. Um, Hannah Johnson is a campus recruiter for EY. Uh, she's awesome. I would absolutely reach out to her. So utilize your LinkedIn to start making these connections prior to the Meet the Firms, okay? Questions on that? Okay, lastly, how, so this is going to be virtual. The way the virtual, I'm going to stop share here. If I can stop share. Somewhere around here. Okay. So the way the virtual Zoom is going to work is they're going to have, um, they're going to give their whatever 20 minute, 30 minute spiel on why their firm's the best firm and you know, why, the, uh, why they're important and why you should be looking to um, connect with them. And then you're gonna get an opportunity in a one-on-one -on -one, -on -one setting to be able to actually talk to these individuals and ask your questions and get asked questions, okay? So this is why I think it's really important for you to one, understand what it is about accounting Okay, and what it is about those individual firms. So you need to do a little bit of research prior to doing this event because they're gonna specifically ask you, you know, hey, so why do you wanna be an accountant? Why? Again, if you've taken my class, you understand why is big to me. You need to be able to articulate your why statement. You know, why are you here at Point Loma? Why have you chosen the career path you've chosen? Why did you select Deloitte? Why did you select Moss Adams? There are specific reasons. And so they're going to ask you those questions. And so just be prepared to be able to speak to that. Okay. Um, I really want to have uh, Kaylee and Caleb jump in just really quick, only because they've actually gone. I don't know. Rachel, did you go through a Meet the Firms yet? I haven't actually. Okay. So Caleb and Kaylee, can you guys jump in really quick and just maybe walk through? Are you, are you comfortable doing that? Okay, Kaylee, why don't we start with you? Tell us a little bit about just your Meet the Firms experience, even though it's going to be different, and just what what do you think made you stand out? Well, yeah. I actually, oh. Caleb, no, you're ahead, laughing. Yes, yeah. dude, come on, man. Uh, I didn't actually go to Meet the Firms when I just said, like when I was going through the recruiting process, but last year I kind of had a chance to kind of facilitate it, and I would mm. say the biggest thing is just be yourself. I know it's kind of nerve wracking. You're like, oh my gosh, this could be my potential employer. Like, oh my goodness. But just be yourself because that will really attract the firm that you fit best with when you're yourself. Because I mean, it kind of like, you're going to be doing the same job pretty much, which like tax or audit, whichever firm that you choose, but really like people that you connect with is going to make the big difference for you. So that's just my advice. Thank you. Caleb. Yeah, no, bouncing off what Kaylee said, I think, um, you know, being yourself is huge. Firms really want to get to know you. And there's a big emphasis on that, especially in uh, public accounting um, right now is, is you as the individual. Um, so definitely be yourself. Uh, another thing I think that really helped me was just bringing like a presence of confidence, but not arrogance, but just being confident, um, being succinct in your in your speech, um, in your communication, and then really just trying to get a, a little on the, on the more personal side, not jumping right into the, you know, the heavy business questions or anything, but also getting to know them as a person, getting to, you know, let them see your personality, um, you know, let your strengths kind of shine in a way. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, I would, I would echo that. I would say that um, a lot of it is going to be 
you know, you're going to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a recruiter. It could be Sarah Moynier. Sarah, you know, she, so she was in tax first and she went into recruiting. Ask Sarah Moynier questions about, hey, what, what's the culture like there? Tell me about Deloitte. You know, tell me about your experience there. I know you were in tax prior. What made you jump into recruiting? Get them to talk about themselves. Okay, they love that. And then I, I again, echo, be yourself. Because again, hopefully the firm that is, one, you are all, don't take this the wrong way, you're all a valuable commodity, <laughs> right? You're all, uh, you've all chosen to pursue a path that, um, and some of you I know are, I see a couple of marketing majors in there. I don't know if you're thinking about switching, but anyway, because uh, I know a lot of marketing majors who switched to accounting after they took 201 and 202. So, so anyway. But what I will say is you're a valuable commodity. They need you. They want you. Um, uh, un, uh, even today, accounting is still has the lowest unemploy unemployment rate of any other uh, business sector, without doubt, without a doubt, right? When the unemployment rate is, you know, 10, accounting is one. That's just the way of the world. The, la the first person hired and the last person to shut the doors on a bankrupt company is the accountant, the controller or the CFO. That's just the way it is. And so they need you. Understand that and understand that maybe a big four firm is not the right fit for you. We have this mentality that, oh yeah, I gotta go to EY or KPMG or because people previous to me have done that. And that's not always the case. Pick the right firm for you. Maybe it is a Lindsay or maybe it's a Moss Adams or a BDO Seaman. Those are still amazing firms that offer just different pathways. If you want to be the, the CFO of a, of a Fortune 500 SEC company, yeah, you probably want to go to a big four firm. That's just the, the reality of it. But if your goal is to be the controller or work in finance for a nonprofit or a midsize uh, SEC reporting company or... Um, or a privately held company, uh, Moss Adams, Lindsey Brownell, Levine Lofgren, um, uh, BDO Seedman, Grant Thornton. There's a lot of other really great firms out there. It doesn't have to be big four, okay? You pick the one that's the best fit for you and that you're the best fit for them, okay? Other questions before we jump off here. I think that was more time than I, than I should have taken. Um, do you have a list of like all the accounting firms that will be there or representatives of people? Johnny? <laughs> yeah, I, we have a list. They're, they still, their deadline to register is this Friday. So we'll have a for sure who's going to be there then. And then we can send it out to you. That's yeah, so works. you'll, yeah, Michael, you'll have that list and you can then um, start to do your research. It's really important that you get to know the people that are going to be there. And again, always reach out to the alums. We, the one thing I will say about our accounting department and probably the reason you chose it, our alums are extremely, uh, sorry, my wife is bugging me right now. <laughs> our alums are extremely um, dedicated to helping our other accounting and alums get into those firms. They want to recruit other Point Loma. I always hear, we need more Point Loma students. We need more Point Loma students. And so, Get to know those alums that are coming, okay? What else? Um, you mentioned that there was a sign in mm -hmm. to, hi, he, uh, you mentioned that there was a sign in to um, get into like the Meet the Firms. Is that, I never, I didn't see anything about that. Um, so I was just wondering if I, you had anything about that. Tell her what she's won, Johnny. <laughs> so I'll come in, in, a, in the following week or so. Once the firms all register and they have their time slots oh. picked up, then you'll register for the ones you want to go to and pick like a little time slot for a one-on-one -on -one with yeah. the firms. Oh, so it hasn't come out yet. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, 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 don't don't, sure don't, don't apologize. Uh, great, hey, that's a great question, Hemi. Great question. What else? I would I would add something into Nick. Thank you. Um, I, I would encourage you guys just to stay open to uh, firms maybe that aren't on your target list. Um, you know, you may have, have a kind of a set firm that you really are super into um, going into recruiting that you'd love to work for. 
but just keep an open mind because you never know what their demand is for, uh, for next year, if you're going to connect with those individuals. So, you know, up during this season, explore your relationships, apply to a few different firms, keep your, keep your options open. And then once you start getting offer letters, then you can start determining what firms you want to work for. Um, I also want to add another thing just from experience is if you are like, recruiting for a San Diego firm, but you want to be in a different office, don't be afraid to like ask the recruiter for the recruiter for that area's office. Like I recruited through the San Diego office for Deloitte, but I'm in, I interned at the Orange County office and I'm potentially working in the Cleveland office. So like there's plenty of opportunities all around. So don't be afraid to reach out to the recruiter from different areas if you're if you don't want to be in san diego forever so i'm sorry kaylee everybody's coming to from cleveland to san diego you're going from san diego to orange county to to sunny cleveland wow how exciting it's like yeah. the pair it's the paris of the midwest i hear oh gosh i don't know <laughs> about that <laughs> hey here's the other thing i will say uh i want you all to be to be in that uncomfortable position of getting multiple offers and having to turn somebody down. So going back to what uh, Caleb and Kaylee said, get multiple offers. That's what you're, that's your end goal is to get multiple companies seeking out your, uh, your work. And so, and then you can go, Oh my gosh, I have to make a decision now. And it's off. I love it. I love hearing students who are like, I'm so nervous. I'm like, why? It's business. This is business. In business, there sometimes everybody should win. And those companies that you don't accept, they'll still win. They're going to get their people. But it gives you an opportunity to start the negotiation, to start learning how to negotiation and start learning to have difficult conversations. Because it's a difficult conversation to turn down a. I know Caleb BDO, I still like BDO, probably still feels a little, you know, but they, but they understand. Right? They're not going to take it personally. There's nothing personal about any of the decisions you're making. But I do want you to get multiple offers. I've seen it the other side where a student just goes for one company and they don't get it. And then next thing you know, recruiting season's over and they're, they're shut out. And you don't want that. So interview with multiple companies, uh, get offers from multiple companies, and then we'll figure, I'll help you walk through that process of, uh, of offer. Okay. Other questions? I will say another, another thing too. Sorry. Keep no, talking. don't be sorry, man. Um, this, the recruiting process doesn't stop until you sign your full-time offer. Uh, even in the internship process, it's, it's still recruiting. Um, and so, you know, with that being said, like that gives you an opportunity to see, you know, is this company a good fit for me? And it also gives them an opportunity to you're a good a good fit for the company um so just you know put your best foot forward keep your keep you know maintain your professionalism um there's you know stories where students get a little too comfortable or something and that's probably not going to be the case with you guys at all but um yeah i just say that recruiting doesn't really stop until you sign your full-time offer outstanding anything else Okay, I'm going to stop recording now. <laughs>